Hello there, my name's Vince from my mate Vince, and in this video today, I've bought an Amazon box of returns from eBay. Anyway, there's supposed to be 50 items in here, and I paid the grand total of £45. I haven't opened it yet, I just took off the labels here. So let's see what we get for £45 when it comes to Amazon returns. Will it be a load of Nintendo Switches, the OLED model? Hmm, that would be nice. Or would it just be numerous DAB radios that don't work? Would it just be headsets, unbranded and stuff like that? Will it basically be a box of junk? Right, okay. Well, tooth, ex tooth effects, that's good. What's that, to give you white teeth? Well, my teeth are not very white at all. So well, already we're off to a good start. We've got a little USB-C to, uh, Oh no, yeah, well that's no good. So uh, yeah, lightning connector which is broken at the end, so that's not gonna be repairable. Hopefully things in here will be faulty. HDMI cable, case, an energizer, hard case. Oh, it's a little torch. Right, okay. Surely people don't return batteries if they don't last a year. What's that about? Surely not. Oh, this is going to be very boring. Display port, battery chargers, pink headset, I was right about something. Sky remote. Right, I'm just going to keep going until something interesting comes up. Power bank. Now, that might be something okay. If that doesn't work, that might be an interesting one. I'm going to put that one to one side because obviously I want stuff that doesn't work that might be interesting for videos. Another smartwatch. Aha, what have we got here? Some sort of clock radio. Right, we'll put that one to one side. That might be a video. Wireless earbuds, put that to one side. Earpods, that's not bad. Let's have a look at these on the inside. Oh, oh look at the amount of wax in them. I don't know if you can see that or not. But they're full of wax. You can even see a bit of wax on the white there. Right, okay. Do you know what? I'll put them to one side because they might make an interesting video. Right, well, do you know what? That might be useful, and that could also make a little tea break fix if that doesn't work. An extension cable. More uh, lightning connector earpods. Wireless earphones. Right, is this interesting? The last thing in the box, what is this? Very, very, very heavy. Please be interesting. Well, do you know what? That's good. I mean, they can't be faulty, can they? They're sealed. Well, unless they took one out and it didn't work. Maybe they've been there for ages, but no, they should they should be okay. We'll test them. Right, okay, I've got a few items here. Let me test them. Hopefully the ones in that pile over there, some of them are gonna be faulty, and maybe I can uh, maybe I can attempt to fix them. Well, I'm not sure why these are in here, because the date on them is 0427, so we've still got four years left on them, and they are 1.62 volts. And even if I go up here and just go onto a random one, let's try to pierce through, 1.62. So I'm already off to a flying start. Well happy with that because these are useful for old toys. And I often do old toys and stuff on my channel. And from memory, I think they're quite expensive. So I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. Not £45 expensive, but still good. Right, okay, I've been testing. Luckily, I do have a few faulty items. I think if you were a reseller, I think this would actually be a good buy. For example, this alarm clock here is called iDawn or something like that. And uh, it actually does wireless charging. I was wondering what this top bit's for. And if I get my phone and put it on there, you will see there's 71%. So, uh, 
you know, it charges. The idea is you just have it on your bedside table and you leave it down there charging away. It's got Bluetooth. It's not the brightest on display here. That's the only reason I think maybe it was sent back. But that's completely normal because when you press this, it will dim to different levels. So I've done, I mean, it doesn't feel like a quality product, but I've had a look and they're £40. You know, they're selling currently on in places like Curry's for £40. Other things, these little Sony headphones are working supposed to be extra bass as far as i can see these wireless ones here all seem to be doing what they need to be doing i've got these lightning connectors here i've wiggled them everywhere minus works plus works and when you you know for volume and when you hit the middle it pauses to video this extension lead works and we've got the battery thing here so i think between here and here you've really kind of made your money back i haven't even tested the headsets there and this sort of stuff here i don't think is going to make for interesting videos i will go through it but things like cables and stuff if the hdmi cable's faulty you're not going to be able to fix that unless it was just dirt on one of the pins so uh, i mean i will go through it but i think for this video here I've got three items that are 100% faulty. So we have a power bank here, which is acting kind of strange. When you plug it in, it looks like it's charging, but it's not drawing anything when I plug it into this amp meter here. Thank you, the coder, for sending that over. And uh, also, when you plug in something into it, it doesn't charge up. We've got some lightning connectors here that appear to have a fault just here because I was wiggling it around here and the sound comes and goes. So I might take a look at that. And lastly, we've got this here. And with this, when I plug it in, it just keeps coming up with a red light here when I have all four batteries connected. But when I only have two or three connected, it comes up with the amber light. So it's not the batteries, it's something to do with when we put more batteries into the circuit, it stops working. So I think I'll go through these three on this video just to see if we can have any success in fixing anything. Okay, so we've plugged it in here now and you can see 93%, but why is it not drawing anything? Really strange. But anyway, when we turn it on here, it doesn't do anything. And apparently if you hit this twice, the light's supposed to come on. Right, I can see that there's a thing going all the way around here. I can't see any screws on the back, so I think it's going to be one of these things that's clipped together. So obviously there's going to be lithium batteries in here, so I need to be careful, but I can't use like a plastic spudger in here because it's not going to be, it's too tight. So I think I'm going to have to use something like this. I mean, I hope it's not glued together. I wonder do you have to pop this bit out and then that will give you access to uh, the board. Here we go. Not sure if there's gonna be any hidden screws in here. Okay. That's it there. I can see that there's a, uh, that looks like the battery down here. I was thinking it was going to be those 18650s, but maybe not. Maybe it's some sort of flat battery, similar to like a Nintendo Switch. How would you take this thing apart? There's no hidden screws anywhere. Bet it's all glued. Well, here we go. No, it's clipped. Yes, it's clipped. So it made a lovely unclipping sound on this top bit here and it got my hopes up because normally once you start unclipping something you can get your fingers under it, the rest of it sort of pops out. Annoyingly, the top third of this popped out okay, not brilliantly, but it popped out okay. But below the screen downwards where the battery is, uh-uh, didn't want to pop out at all. It was glued. And uh, so really this product is unrepairable because you can't get into the thing without damaging it. I added some heat to one side to try to help me undo it, but I didn't want to add too much heat because the outside's plastic, so it's going to melt. And also you've got a lithium battery inside, which I do not want to set on fire. So I don't want to put heat near it. And also I don't want to pierce it by just ramming in the metal pry tool because in case I uh, pierce the inside, then that's going to be bad news. So uh, what I'm resorting to is really having to just bend bend the cover away to give me access to the circuit board and that's what you're seeing in this part of the video 
Right, okay, I'm not going to do it any more than that, purely because I can't do it more than that. I'm going to end up destroying it completely, and I think this may be fixable. So what I'm going to do is I can see it's welded on here. Ah, oh, there we go. Look, you see the battery there is loose. That battery weld has failed. Now, is that why it's not turning on? Can you see there? Let's just see if there is any charge in the battery itself. Such a shame that this doesn't come apart nicer. So we're on volts DC. I don't know which is negative and which is positive. Let's just go on to them now. Got anything in here? Yes, we have 3.6 volts. Excellent, okay. So if that goes down there, in theory, it should work. Let's see now, would it turn itself on if I put pressure down there? No, so it's still not coming on. Right, let's plug it in, see if it's drawing anything now. Yes, it is. Oh, hold on, one second. Yes, it is, there you go. Look at that, when I hold it down, can you see that? 1.7 amps. Fantastic, right, okay. So now does it, uh, there you go, light's on. Right, so let's unplug that. Light's still on. And it says now 90%, brilliant. Right, well, do you know what? This gives me the perfect opportunity to use my spot welder. Yes, that was sent in by Robert from Timsey's Auto Air. Thank you, Robert. I've been waiting for ages to use this. I've had this now for, what, a year or something? And I've never used it. So let me get my big car battery booster and let's, solder let's weld that back onto here because I can't solder that on because it's well mm, you could but it's dangerous you see because of the heat that could be generated in the battery you can see that there is four little spot welds there but they haven't worked so if you have a look here can you see those little dots they're the spot welds on oh, no, four there's there's what there's uh, there's eight yeah so that's uh, that's failed I wonder now do you go through from the very top is there two layers here Two layers there, but yeah, I presume you just go right the way down. Is this one welded all right? Yeah, that one's welded all right, you can see just here. Yeah, so there's two layers. I presume, see in this instance here, they're gonna be welded. They're gonna be welded to each other, so I can't separate them. I don't know whether I'm gonna actually have the strength now to go right the way through two layers, but we'll give it a go. You never know, maybe I can maybe I can hold it on for longer or make it more powerful. I think you can make it more powerful. Excellent. Aha, here we go. Slightly nervous. So this is my car starter over here, and this is a cheap spot welder. So what I have to do is plug my car charger in. Annoyingly, my uh, thing's broken here, so we're gonna have to try to balance it. Hope it makes a good connection. So it only goes in that way. We're in. So we're gonna be putting that to here. And we've got to kind of jam this in here somewhere. I only use this once to start the Rolls Royce and then uh, it's uh, the spring just came out. It's a spring here and now. I don't know where the spring is. Hopefully it's in the Rolls Royce, but this plastic here is all cracked. I'll be, I'll be able to buy new crocodile clips. All right, let's turn it on here. And what do I do here? How do you turn the thing on? Here we go. Right, you have to hold that down. All right, so now, what we want it as powerful as it can go. So what will that be? Right, 30 is the most powerful. All right, here we go, let's have some fun. Now, obviously, what makes it very hard, let's go to boost here. What makes it very hard is the fact that I've got to fight against this annoying lid. So let's just get this ready here. And obviously, the battery's connected. 33%, it says. Can I turn it off? Hmm, I hope this doesn't blow up now because the thing's on right now. That's the light on. Deary me, give me a heart attack. Ah, uh, how am I going to, this lid is so annoying. Here goes. Right, one on here. Jesus Christ. Right. There we go, that was one. Whether that went through or not, I don't know. I'm going to do loads. I can smell it.
See this thing here only lasts for so long before it turns itself off because I have to use the boost thing for it to work. Right, let me try to zoom in for you. Should I try to do it up here so you can see? Keep Hake's mug. It's not gonna be heavy enough. Now that will work. Right, here we go. On here. On with the boost. On here. 35, no 30. Come on now, now you can fully see what's going on. Let's zoom in a bit more. You ready? So one on here and here. Nice. Uh oh, it won't come off. And it's turned itself off. Ooh, that was close. Right, I think it's over. I think it's caused the problem with my battery. Let me just unplug that. I'll get back in again. I suppose sometimes my battery you might see it as some sort of overload. Nice though, isn't it? Thanks, Robert, for sending this over. It's nice to get a chance to use the thing. Right, I think that will do. Let's have a little look. Right, it's stuck. I'm not gonna go under there and force it off, but it has stuck. Now, does this come on here now? Do you have to hold it in? Uh-oh. So now, have I, was it, were you supposed to remove a fuse or something? Have I sent weird voltage into here now, which has overheated something? Let's plug it in to the charger and see what happens. Maybe this will reset it. Come on now. Right, we're drawing 1.9 amps, fantastic. So it's definitely working differently than it was before. Right, let me get my phone and let's see if my phone can charge from here. Then we can put it back together. Okay, annoyingly I wasn't hitting record when I come back in, but look, check this out. If I plug it in here, you can now see it's 32% and it's charging here, you can see the symbol up there. And if I unplug it and plug it into this one, you will also see that it's set charging here. So that's working and 32%. What I had to do is, because it was so bent up from me forcing up, it's really a horrible device to take apart. It's not really repairable. Uh, I got this in here underneath and I forced the plastic back down to try to make the bend go because you're never going to get that back down again. It's always going to want to spring up. But by putting this in here and then forcing it over that, it means the plastic can kind of do this up and then down again. So yeah, I've got a bit of a kink here and a bit of a kink here, but it doesn't matter because the top's gone down into place. So it was clipped here and here. And I just had to put a bit of glue in here and a little bit here. So uh, there we go. It is now working, which is good and charging, 32%, plug it in here, you will now see it will charge. So although I can't move this on to somebody else, it can definitely be used by myself and my family, which is, uh, which is good. So yeah, really happy with that one. Right, let's move on to the next one. The reason I wouldn't be able to move it on to someone else is purely because of the state of it. If you could have opened this safely, I would have been happy to possibly resell this on because the spot weld had failed and I just spot welded it again. So as long as it was strong enough, it should have been safe. The only thing is it looks a complete mess now for a resellable item, but it's fine for home use. Right, okay, so I've got these plugged in here. You're gonna to have to take my word for it that there's no sound coming out of them because I can't, uh, it's too hit and miss to even put it to the microphone to show you because it only comes and goes every now and then. But watch this, this is Gadget UK 164, also known as the legend in my circles. <laughs> if I do this, you can see that it does take it off pause. Yeah, and on again, and if I do volume, you can see that the volume is working. But the only time I get sound, let's take it off pause, the only time I get sound 
is every now and then if I wiggle it here. So there's nothing coming out of either of them. So apart from the disgusting earwax, I don't think there's anything wrong with this end here because if it wasn't coming out of one, you'd expect it might be a fault here or if it was this one here. But the fact it doesn't come, it's not coming out of both, it says to me that there's going to be a problem between here and here. And the most likely place is going to be here because this is the thing that always gets the abuse. Now again, this is not fixable for something that can be sold on but my kids again use these headphones. So it might be possible that I might be kind of able to break this open, fix the, the wire, and then maybe put a heat shrink on it. It's gonna look disgusting, but I don't know. I think it'd be quite nice to see what the wires look like in here. So uh, yeah, let's come back to Gadget, hopefully at the end of the video, and I might be able to show you some uh, sound coming out of here. So we have to cut into the cable to try to find out where the break in the wire is. So I'm just using some tweezers. But there's nothing down this end there, so I'm just using my snips just to make a little cut. And then I can use my tweezers to kind of, it's very rubberized this cable, and I can pull it away just to give me access to the wires on the inside. These wires are super small, really, really small. There we go, we're into it. And have a look here now. Yeah, this is where it's gone just at the tip of where it goes from here, where it's doing all the flexing. Can you see it's all stripped back? So like everything, it just goes from the constant flexing. And uh, yeah, these wires are super thin. It doesn't take much to break them after probably flexing tens of thousands of times. So now I need to use the Having Fun Repairs Dremel tool to cut in to this outer cover because there's going to be a little chip and a circuit board, believe it or not, at the end of this lightning connector. That's how the Apple thing knows whether it's a non-Apple device that's being plugged into it because they might not be using the same chip or any chip at all. So annoyingly, even after taking off the cover, we are still greeted with a load of moulded plastic. I mean, these things are made really well. They're full. There's no empty void at all. They're completely moulded, full of plastic. But I chip away at it bit by bit, and eventually it does expose the circuit board on the inside. Okay, so this is it here, and what I had to do is get the soldering iron, and I had to just melt off the glue. This was all covered with this kind of... You can feel, well, you can't feel, <laughs> obviously. You can see how smooth that is. There's some sort of like epoxy type stuff over it. So I, I've scraped it back and then I just got some fresh solder and I went across each of them. And then I've been looking up the wires here. So, so we have a red green mix. We have a gold green mix. We have a gold red mix, a solid red and a solid green. So looking online, the green one is going to be for the left speaker. The red one's gonna be for the right speaker. Then what you have to do is you have to find the red and green wire. It looks slightly thicker than the other ones. And there's a hidden, there's a sneaky microphone wire in the middle of that. So basically this is ground here. Where are we gone? This is ground here. The gold one is your mic wire. So when it comes to the green gold, that is also ground. And when it comes to the red gold, that's also ground. So there's loads of ground wires because I suppose... The, red, uh, the right speaker's got a ground, the left speaker's got a ground, and the mic's got a ground. So we have three grounds, don't we? And then three wires for the left, right, and uh, mic. So that's what we are now. So what we have to do is we have to solder up these three together. That one, that one, and this one. Just burn off the end, because what happens is, if you can have a look here, I burnt off the end, so I used the soldering iron, and then it's got all enamel on it, and that's the reason they don't kind of short together when they're all in here, because look, they're all just wrapped around each other. These are all enamel coated. So I get the soldering iron, and I just rub across the ends to uh, to burn it all off, as I've done, where did I do it? Here, yeah, and then it allows you to get some solder onto it. Now, when it comes to this here, I had to look online for this bit, and basically, you can see that we have contacts on one side, but not the other. So ignore them too, they're covered with epoxy. Obviously when I took it apart, it's very hard because the wires were all completely stripped, so I couldn't see what was what, it was just a mess. But basically, ignore this middle one here, this isn't actually in use, this one here. These four are the ones in use. So this one here is for the green wire, and this is the left ear pod. This one here is actually gonna be your mic. So this is gonna be the gold wire, the microphone. That's doing nothing. It's not connected. 
This one here is the ground because it's massive, so we're going to be having all three of those wires connected to here. And this one here is the red. This is going to be for your right one. So I'm just going to solder them up and then I'll show you the finished result. Okay, so here we have the connector and this is where the little pads are. So it's actually quite straightforward when you start doing it, but obviously there's not a lot of room. Right, let's plug it into the iPad and actually see if it's going to do anything. Right, here goes. Let's plug it in. Hopefully I don't blow up the iPad. We're in. Now, is volume going to work? No way, it works. What? Okay, now can we start it? No, hold on. Oh my God, I can hear it. can actually hear it coming out of both sides. Let's just put the volume right up. You'll be able to hear that, listen. <laughs> there goes Chris. Happy birthday, Chris. That is coming out of both of them. Now, will it pause? Oh, it does pause. So I don't think you can start it off from the beginning. You have to tell YouTube you want to play it. But, oh my God, it actually works in the volume. Do you know what? That isn't actually too bad. You know, it's a bit annoying when you're just doing one, but you know if you had a few to do at once, it's not too bad. And basically, that's it there. So maybe you might want to take a, uh, a screenshot of that there. Quick, quick, quick. Come on, come on. Hurry up with the screenshot. My arms are getting tired. Three, two, one. And then one. hopefully you'll be able to read my writing. Obviously, these contacts here are what you can see here, not the lightning connector, the back of the lightning connector. So we've got green, left, speaker red right speaker these are all the grounds which is a bigger pad that middle one's not connected and the gold's the microphone but don't forget the gold wire is hidden in the red and green wire so that's it there absolutely amazing so i'm just gonna put some glue on that and while we're gluing that we'll give a shout out to them my mavens massive the members are kitdigital.com kip hakes max rokotansky having fun repairs will mccavis chris seal felipe at mrkeeves.com DJ VG, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, he's the one that sent over the spot welder, Daniel Watson, Zeke C, Anthony Dean, Bazza 2, Operational 117, Russ Mellinson, Save Our Stuff, Ellis Garbutt and Hunter Short. Thank you so much guys. Do you know in this instance I think I might just fill it with glue. I'm going to chop up some bits of glue and fill it with glue. So that's exactly what I do. I chop up little bits of this hot glue and I shove them in there and then I start heating it up. Now obviously the plastic is melting at round about the same temperature I think as the glue but it doesn't deform too badly and it means it's all kind of like melting together so hopefully it will give it a little bit of strength. The problem is the cable hasn't got any real strength it's just going to come shooting out again. So you know one little yank and it's going to be gone. So now I'm getting some yellow heat shrink and I'm getting quite a big bit and I'm putting it on there. The problem I've got is, is that the bit that needs to go over the sleeve is going to be far too big for the wire. So what I'm doing is I'm filling it all with liquid tape, so it's like a liquid rubber, before I shrink it down and then as I shrink it down I'm hoping the liquid tape will kind of ooze down that there. So I'll just show you that bit now. Look at that all losing out. Nice. Okay, we're done. What I did is I sliced it here and then I use hot glue to wrap it round because the heat shrink was way too big for this wire here. If I was doing it again, I would have put probably two more heat shrinks on here, a super thin one and then a medium sized one. And then you see I could have padded up this with heat shrink rather than having to rely on liquid tape and also uh, hot glue. But I don't know, I think if you yank that, it's gonna come straight out, but it's uh, it wasn't working before and it's working now. So let's just plug it in, press play. And you can see volume full there, you can actually hear that. 
Hopefully you can hear that. So all I have to do is clean it and pause. Yeah, so that's all good. Right, okay, let's give it a tiny little clean because look at the earwax in here. So hopefully you're eating your dinner right now. Look at that. Oh, look, oh, look at that. And here. But to be fair, that's just through normal use. That just happens. It doesn't mean the person that owned the disease was, we, we all have earwax. Look at that. Lovely. See, my videos have it all. Earwax and spot welding. I don't think that combination has ever happened on YouTube before. Anyway, there we go. Well happy with that. Right, okay, uh, let's have a look at the battery charger because, believe it or not, the battery charger is working. Sorry, I'll show you the battery charger in a minute, but I need to show you the microphone working here. What I also did is I got a bit of IPA and I just rubbed it in here, here, here and here, so now I'm happy to put these in my ear. When I do, I know I can't prove this to you, but it sounds perfect. And if you think about it, it's going to. These wires here are all intact. They just went from here, which is the place wires always go. They're either going to go here, or I suppose there's a chance of them going here as well, but more than likely it's going to be here. So we've got fresh cable here. Is it going to last as long? No. If that gets yanked, I'm sure it's going to come straight out. Also, I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it will take much abuse before it fails. But at this moment in time, it sounds perfect. There's no crackles or anything. And the microphone's working. So watch this. I can do it through Siri. So I just hold this down. What is the weather like in Tampa, Florida? There you go. Partly cloudy, 27 degrees, a lot warmer than here. So let me show you the battery charger. Right, have a look here. It's gone to green and I checked it about an hour ago and it was on amber. So I think what happens here is, like me, the person plugged it in, probably left it for 15 or 20 minutes and it was stuck on red. And normally when you see red, you think, oh, it's not working properly. I mean, if it was flashing red, you might think, well, you probably still think it's not working properly. You would expect the batteries to have arrived partly charged, but maybe if they've been on the warehouse shelf for a long time, they were completely discharged. But right now it's gone to green. So it did go from red, amber to green so there's nothing wrong with these I just think they were returned incorrectly so now I'm just going to quickly check the other batteries we have some normal alkaline throwaway ones and we've also got a whole bag of rechargeable ones so I just want to check them for voltages just to see if they will be able to be brought back to life right really good news as far as I can see all these batteries have charged and the one and only thing that I found faulty was in this pack here and these are very low amperage here you can see 600 milliamp hours compared to some of these I think are 3000 or 2300 with this one here can you see it looks a bit crusty on this side and also it's hard to see but if you look where it says in for power compared to this one here this is nice and white this is leaked you can see it's kind of gone see-through there so uh, yeah this one's going to be put in my recycle bag of batteries but everything else is okay so with uh rechargeable bat batteries i forgot they're 1.2 volts normally aren't they but if you have a look here even these ones these haven't been charged but they're 1.25 these were the ones that i have been charging all day and they've well not all day but while i've been working and they're 1.42 but look at all these ones here every one of these will be able to be charged because they're all like 1.29 let's just go into random ones 1.12 1.28 so I think every one of them will be working fine and get this you see this pack here I've never seen AA batteries with so much voltage in them every one of them is 1.7 volts so normally I see batteries that are like 1.58 or something or maybe 1.6 at a push but these are all 1.7 so uh, yeah there we go but I presume it doesn't damage the equipment that it goes into so I think all in all that was a nice little buy. Now, initially I thought those ones might be quite boring to fix, but I really enjoyed this one here because I got to use my, it's 99% now, I got to use my welder, which I've never had to use, you know, spot welder. I never got to use that before, so I really enjoyed that. And you know the Apple earphones? I actually quite enjoyed it because the wires were so small and stuff, I thought it was quite interesting. So uh, all in all, I think that was quite a good box, even if you just count the batteries that I've got. So, uh, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and I hope you did too. And we're now at 100%, which is good. Is it still turning on? Yay, there we go. 
fantastic. So if you enjoyed it, give it a massive thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching.